Hey guys, how's it going? We are standing in my parents' garden getting ready to start our planting project for the day. We're gonna be planting some poppy seeds, a whole bunch of different varieties, both in their orchard and in the south garden back at our house. So the thing about poppy seeds is that they need a cold vernalization period of about four to six weeks in order to germinate, which is what they get in nature. You know, they flower, produce their seed heads, drop their seed late summer, fall, and then that seed sits there all winter, gets the cold it needs in order to germinate the next year. So we've got to kind of emulate that process. And there are a few different methods of growing poppy seeds that I have tried. Uh, well, the first one is the easiest and it's just buying them pre-grown from the garden center, right? So that's, you know, kind of the, <laughs> the lazy way out, I guess. Uh, and I've had real good luck with that. The second way is winter sowing. So putting the seeds in water jugs or milk jugs, you know, we've done winter sowing videos. I've actually had fair luck with poppies doing it that way. Uh, however, poppies don't love to be transplanted. So there's a little bit of risk factor, you know, moving them from the water jug out into the landscape. Again, have had pretty good success doing it that way. But last year I saw Erin the Impatient Gardener she has a YouTube channel, so we'll link it down below. She showed her method of planting poppy seeds, and it's basically just taking your seeds and sprinkling them out in the garden right now, just on top of snow. And she has great luck with it. Basically winter sowing without the equipment, the water jugs or the tape or any of that stuff. So I'm gonna give that method a try this year. When I saw her video last year, I had already gone through all my seeds. I'd already planted them all in water jugs and I didn't have any left. So I thought next year, I'm gonna file this idea away and we're gonna give it a shot. And the last way really of planting them is you could put them in a refrigerator, the seeds. Um, if you do it early enough, like right now, you could put them in the refrigerator four to six weeks pop them out of their fridge, plant them in seed trays, and grow them on that way under lights and such. They do need light in order to germinate, but that's kind of the benefit. So today we sprinkle them on top of the snow. As the snow melts, the moisture helps break down the seed. Um, it helps get it ready for germination, and then it's exposed to the light it needs in order to grow, essentially. Okay, Whew. so I'm chilly. I'm gonna go inside. My mom is actually here. I asked her if she wanted to be here so that she would know exactly where I sprinkled the uh, seeds. That's the thing. Like I'm gonna have to indicate or figure out a way to indicate where my seeds are out in the South Garden so that we don't think that they're weeds in the spring so we don't accidentally weed them. But I'm gonna uh, lay all my seed packets out so that you guys can see what varieties we're starting today. Whoo, it's fresh outside. You ready for this poppy planting? Oh, I can't wait. Oh. I'll make us coffee. Oh, yay. Yeah. Well, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. That'll make this project nice and warm. Okay, so here's what we've got for varieties today, and we're just going to split them in half. I'll plant half here and half at home. Uh, starting top left, we've got giant double black peony poppy. And you can see the botanical name, too, of what we're putting in the ground today. Uh, because I know that Erin has said that she's had problems with the Shirley poppies before coming up, but she always has really good luck with bread seed. So I don't know, we're just gonna give all of them a try. We'll pop a picture up on the screen of each one of these. Uh, the next one is candy floss peony poppy. It's a really pretty one. Uh, black swan, you can see I've already planted some of these. Uh, Hungarian blue, wedding party, which I can't find a picture of. So I apparently planted these last year. I did plant these last year and I gathered my own seed. There's a whole bunch in there. So I'm guessing it's a white one. And then bottom row here, we have lilac pom-pom poppy, the amazing gray, which I did these in water jugs last year. They did fantastic. The, the flowers aren't as big as I expected them to be, but beautiful. Giant double cream peony poppy. Oh, I'm super excited about this. Kind of wish I would have ordered a couple packets of that one. And then we've got a ton of bread seed poppy seeds uh, because I had this packet from Flora and then I saved a ton. Let me show you how little these seeds are. Well, you can kind of see, look at these little specks. One of my packets has sprung a leak. <laughs> I don't know which one it is. You're going to have poppy sprinkled all the way down to your orchard. Love it. Yeah. <laughs> There was a, oh well, CS was up in this tree <laughs> when he got here. <laughs> Look at this. Mm. 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 So this is the orchard area here, point of reference, the house sits up the hill a bit. 
I call it the orchard because this was an orchard until really recent years, but the trees were really old and trees, fruit trees in particular, kind of have a lifespan they they and they were needing to come out and yep, it was time. time and it's a mm -hmm. fresh opportunity for something else. And we're both shooting for, so what you're shooting for in here, we're also shooting for in our orchard. So it's kind of fun because yeah. we can both do things like this. <laughs> and if you look way over there, you can see a table and chairs set that mom and I picked up. I don't know if we filmed that outing. Did we film yeah, that outing? Yeah, I think we did, did we? Yeah. yeah, it came home mm -hmm. from one of our antique trips. There's a chair pulled out there for us to sit. Oh, <laughs> nice cozy day for that. <laughs> so I will show you a close up of what we're doing with the seed, what the seed look like looks like. And then we're just gonna try to spread the seed as I don't know if it needs to even be even. It just needs to just be, we're just Random. gonna spread it randomly. Yeah. I love this kind of project. You do want to make sure when you're putting your seed down to find an area that gets proper light. Uh, because right now in the winter time when trees don't have leaves on them, everything looks like it's a sunny area. But you have to think about what is it going to be like in the summertime when these plants are actually growing. You want to put them in a spot that receives enough sunshine. Look at how tiny those are. Itty bitty. And I'm guessing I probably have a couple thousand seeds at least maybe two to 3,000 seeds in this one packet that I saved from my own garden last year. So to spread them, this is what we're gonna do. <laughs> That's basically it. I mean, just sprinkle them around on the ground in areas that receive enough sunshine and then hopefully the snow and moisture of the spring brings everything up beautifully. So here we go. <laughs> all of the seeds scattered so I'm just going to point out the areas where we're hoping to see poppies come up this season now. We planted quite a large drift right along this fence. It kind of was thicker right here and then we tapered it off and then there are a few varieties planted all along the base of this wall. They end right about here and then a big section that goes along the first part of this fence there. It is hard to meter out those tiny little seeds, um, but we didn't really want it to be super thick in any area. You kind of want it to look like, well, down in here, you kind of want it to look a little bit more haphazard and a little bit more natural. Uh, in my garden, I'm gonna probably be doing a few more drifts of them, like solid drifts, and then possibly scattering a few in the orchard, more like this. Now we're gonna head home. You know what, before we head home, I'm gonna grab a few milkweed seeds. These have been along the back fence line at my parents' house since I was little. And they are beautiful and they just reseed themselves and they also need a cold period like our puppies. So you can see here, look at this beautiful seed head. Look at all of these beautiful seeds. Take these home and plant them. I scoured the car for an empty container and all I could find was an old cookie wrapper. So that'll do. Thank you. Okay, we are back home, ready to plant more poppy seeds out in the south garden, both in this corner behind me and the far corner. And I don't know if it matters how much snow is on top of the ground, like how much snow we're sprinkling the seeds on top of. There is about a couple inches sitting here now, but I just looked at the forecast because it's feeling way colder out here right now than it was earlier, and it's much more gray. We are expecting snow today, and I didn't know that. So I wanna get this done quickly. Uh, there really isn't a good way to indicate where I've planted seeds because I can't, I can't put stakes in the ground clearly because it's frozen so I've got a pile of stakes I'm just gonna place them just laying on the ground in a perimeter around all the seeds that I put down today here they are so what I'll do is wherever I plant seeds I'll just lay them like this on the ground <laughs> around seeds and hopefully they'll just kind of melt down with the snow maybe I'll kind of push them down in like that Anyway, this is the first area I want to put poppies I've got totem pole panicums blue spruce hydrangeas and a heptacodium. I thought it would look really pretty for there to be a drift of poppies there because these poppies grow anywhere between two and a half to three and a half feet tall. So I think that'll be a nice second or new layer, I guess. And then that'll leave us enough space to do some low things out here. I think I'm gonna spread all of the bread seed poppy seeds I've got left in this spot. <laughs> I 
think that that'll work out okay. So the seeds are spread all the way around the back side of the hydrangea in between the grasses, kind of back behind there, and then all the way in front here, kind of going back around the heptacodium. I think that'll be gorgeous. I think we'll plant a few right over here next. <laughs> Okay, so in this area, I'm actually standing in the lane back here, so there is space to plant up here, uh, but I want to do something different. Like, I want the poppies to be in a more visible spot because I'm going to be planting taller things back behind the baptisia. So I planted a drift of the wedding party poppies kind of intermixed with the baptisia and then going this direction. So there'll be taller things back behind, but these will be closer to our little walkway that's next to our raspberry beds. I think that'll be really pretty. Now we're gonna go way over there. So right in this area, we have three spring grove arborvita. There's a rose right here, a Miss Ruby buddleia, so pink blooms, yellow echinacea. So I thought some of the, maybe the lilac, pom pom, and the double black peony mixed together in this area would be gorgeous. And then I think I'm gonna tuck the milkweed seeds just right in back here, right kind of back where the gator is. <laughs> interesting but I think it's gonna work out well I mean this is what it does in nature so yeah and hopefully with the stakes in the ground and I just took pictures of where I planted everything hopefully we can stay away from them and not accidentally pull them up in the spring side note I am thrilled with how far we got with this corner in particular with plants I feel like there are some absolutely beautiful things I mean we have a rose here with rose hips we've got a totem pole grass a little tater tot arb. This is a coral berry that still has some of its berries. They're not pink anymore, but it's still adding some texture out here. Uh, there's sedum right in here with beautiful seed heads. There's evergreens, there's hydrangeas, and you can see the blooms over there. Grasses and evergreens just dotted here and there. Going from a completely blank slate out here, I'm really thrilled with the progress. Oh, can we just appreciate how beautiful this blonde ambition grass is? I've got to amp up this display out here. These are beautiful winter interests. And I think I'll feel that way every year. At the end of every season, we'll look back and think, oh, we're so happy with all the things we got in the ground and it's just coming right along. It's exciting. Okay, so this is the last one we need to plant and I'm gonna take these up to the chicken coop where I have the other amazing grays planted just to amp up that display. Hey girls, <sighs> they always come over to greet us. This is where I had the amazing gray poppies last year, right in this area. You can see there's some other things going on. Nepeta and lavender. There was an artichoke right here that probably won't survive the winter. So I'm just gonna scatter seeds kind of throughout this part of the flower bed and possibly over on the other side and hope for the best. Okay, so in this area, they ended up around the trunk of this birch tree, which this canopy isn't very mature yet. It's grown a lot, but this area still receives a lot of afternoon sun because it comes in from this direction and the canopy doesn't go out very far this direction yet. Um, so they're around the base of this behind the lavender and then they go back, not quite as far as the buddleia, which is kind of hard to determine because see all those rose canes? I need to cut all those rose canes away. Um, they're from the Zephyrine Druin Climbing Rose, which is 
going up the side of the chicken coop there. So there are a few scattered underneath the canes. Um, so it should be a really nice little area, nice little patch of poppies here. And I'm hoping there's more bread seed poppies that come up in this area because that's where I had them this last year. That's where I was able to harvest all of those seeds. So hopefully some dropped off into this flower bed before I got to the seed pods. And you can see I did no clean out in this area this fall. There's the artichoke, <laughs> that poor thing. It's like all flat now. Yeah, this area will see some changes this next year. I do have a wisteria over this arbor. And when I planted it, it was because I still had the tool shed right here. And I anticipated training the wisteria up onto that structure. And I just, I don't know, I don't think it's probably wise to keep this huge of a vine on this small of an arbor. The trunk is huge and I planted it when it was like this big around. So yeah, I don't know what I'm gonna do with that. But in terms of the rest of this area, you know all of this will change because we're going to be marrying this whole area together, creating a new garden back here. But the area right in here where the pallet walkway, it's actually right under our feet right now. Uh, and then it ends right about where that standard hydrangea is, but all of this will probably stay quite a bit the same, which I'm happy about because I really love this little area. And with that, I am going to call it because I am freezing cold and it looks like whatever system's moving in is getting closer. So we'll see. We'll see if we get snow. It said 40% chance. I'm just so excited to have some seeds in the ground, well, on the ground, I guess, technically. It's fun to learn from other people what they have done and what they've had success with and then try it out yourself. I mean, we really don't have a lot to lose. Seeds, uh, for the most part, are fairly inexpensive. So, you know, you just throw them out and hope for the best. And if it works, awesome. And I didn't have to mess with the winter sowing, even though that's an easy way of starting seeds. It's still, you know, it's still something we have to monitor. I don't have to um, save any space under grow lights for these things. It's just awesome. So anyway, hopefully later on this year, we'll have some success to report back on this uh, project. I'm going to go inside and warm up. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and we will see you in the next one. Bye.